Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. On today's episode I would like to talk about the city of Bath but before I begin I would like to welcome all of my new and current listeners. I am that medic couch potato for those who are new. I make uh, content on things I find out of interest. I have a series on applying to university that I did as a audio podcast. You can find that on my YouTube channel as well as my podcast channels. All the links on my podcast and my social media will be provided in the description box for each of my episodes. Um, recently, or when I say recently, I mean back in December 2022, I started making video podcasts as Spotify uh, released the option to do so. Unfortunately, not all of my episodes have made it across onto the video podcast on Spotify, but you can still hear them on all of my platform channels. Uh, and if you wanted to see the visual version, I would recommend switching to YouTube because all of the episodes I have so far are on YouTube. Um, so let's begin. So today's episode will be on the city of Bath. I visited Bath back in 2018 during the Easter vacation period. Uh, it was a three day, uh, Easter in the UK, it's a three day uh, weekend. And uh, I decided to explore some parts of the UK and I ended up going to Bath. So I will be talking a bit about the history of Bath as well as all the different places you can visit. Uh, there will be more, obviously, to the places you can visit than what I will mention on my videos. I'm trying to make them as short as I can um, so that it, people don't lose interest. So Bath is a city in uh, the county of Somerset, so county is just a geographical region, um, it's the same as a void warship uh, if you're based in Poland, uh, also called a state or province for those outside of the UK. Um, basically the county just has some administrative um, powers um, and the main authoritative area and uh, for Somerset it happens to be Bath. I just as it's the largest city uh, and settlement in Somerset. Uh, it's actually known for and named after the Roman built baths, hence why it's, uh, Bath is called that. Uh, a bit of an odd name for a city, but it's due to the uh, Roman built baths. I will talk a bit about those as well as we go along and show you the websites for all the places where so you can actually book your tickets um, in advance uh, as it can be cheaper. So, uh, as of the 2021 census, the population for Bath is around 102,000 people, or just under that. Uh, Bath is in the valley of River Avon, and it's around 97 uh, miles, or 156 kilometres west of London, and 11 miles, or 18 kilometres southwest, sorry, southeast of Bristol. So, uh, London uh, is here. Um, to the uh, east of Bath and Bristol's just here to the north, northwest. Um, so it's so if I just zoom out of the map here, so you'll notice that Bath is kind of in the southwest uh, of England, um, and it's actually not far from the border to Wales as well. Uh, pretty close actually. Um, the city actually became a heritage site in 1987. Um, and was actually later added to the world, uh, the Transnational World Heritage Site, known as the Great Spa Towns of Europe in 2021. So the city became a spa uh, with the na Latin name Aqua Solis, meaning the waters of Solis, in 16, uh, 60 AD when the Roman built, Romans built baths and a temple of the valley, temple of the valley of the river Avon. Although hot springs were known before then. So the River Avon is the Avon that runs through um, through Bath, um, and it, I believe it is the 19th longest uh, river in the UK, and is around um, I think 83 uh, yeah 83 miles or so 134 kilometers in length. The name Avon comes uh, from the Welsh cognate word uh, Afon, which means uh, river in Welsh. Um, and you can actually uh, see uh, the river in quite a few different places. I recommend going to the Pulteney Bridge. Um, and you'll get views like this actually off the river and it's really nice. Um, 
some of the historical places I'll mention, so places like uh, Bath Abbey and the Roman Bath are actually pretty close to this uh, Pulteney Bridge, uh, I hope I'm saying it right. Um, so you are able to walk on it and uh, see all the shops um, around the area um, to get some good views of the river. Um, I believe you can also um, get um, river cruises should you wish to see the uh, city from a different angle. Um, if it's possible, uh, I would highly recommend doing so. Uh, this is the Pulteney Ware uh, that you see here. So my first attraction that I'm going to mention today is the Roman Baths. Um, it's actually situated in this area called the Abbey Courtyard due to the fact that the Bath Abbey is uh, behind uh, behind uh, the Baths. So uh, the Roman Baths, um, like I mentioned, was actually um, constructed kind of around... Uh, so the temple that was on site was constructed around 60 to 70 AD. So I presume that the construction of the Roman Bath would be around that area too. And it's actually a well-preserved uh, thermae uh, in Bath, one of the best preserved, I would say, of Roman, archi Roman uh, ruins. Um, and the presence of the temple basically led to the development of a small Roman uh, urban settlement uh, known as Aqua Solis around the site. So Aqua Solis later became um, Bath. So Aqua Solis means um, the waters of Solis. Uh, Solis was actually a Celtic goddess who was worshipped in Bath prior to the Romans' invasion. Um, and then she was actually incorporated into Roman uh, Pantheon and became known as Solis Minerva. Um, and all the objects that were found in this area, um, including inscribed lead tablets uh, and votive objects, um, so like that's objects were sacred um, rituals, uh, suggested that she was, uh, the goddess was a because considers both of, as a nourishing, life-giving mother goddesses, mother goddess, sorry, and uh, also as, a, as an effective agent of curses wished by her votaries. Um, so a lot of the time the curses referred to people cursing the thieves who stole their clothes when they were bathing um, in, in the baths. Um, so Pretty much everything at street level and up actually was built during the later years. So what you see, uh, like for example, this wall I think would have been dated from the Roman time. Uh, this is, I believe, a figurehead of uh, Solis Minerva. Um, but everything else, uh, like all of the other structures around it, would have been added uh, after, say, like the 19th century, I believe. So these are some of the um, ruins you can see from the Roman times. And I think this also is part of the museum um, that you can see. So that again, uh, added much later on. And this is the outside of the um, baths. Um, and the entrance is there, uh, the right entrance. This little bit is the entrance to the uh, pump room, which acts as a restaurant and you can actually try the spa water that Bath is renowned for in this restaurant. Uh, do not drink um, the water in the spring, um, uh, the water you see here, because it's, uh, I don't think it's filtered as well as the pump room water is, so you probably will get ill. Don't do that. Uh, so best to try it in the pump room if you're interested in uh, drinking the, um, uh, the, um, the water. Um, so I think the the article is actually found around 130 or so messages to the goddess as curses. Um, so yeah, so it's actually the only spring, this particular spring designed in, uh, is officially desi designated as hot in uh, Britain. Um, and you know one of the reasons for keeping 
for naming this, oh, sorry, for rather dedicating this temp, uh, this bath and the temple rather to Solis Minerva was to try and get the salts to adapt to the Roman culture. Um, so yeah, so that's just a bit about the um, the, um, the bath. Um, and I believe uh, after the third or so century, uh, urban life and Western Roman Empire started to decline. Um, so some of the great suits of the bath were actually falling into disrepair at that time, but the hot springs still continue to be used. This is what the um, the spring of uh, the Roman bath looked like, um, you know, in their heyday. Um, and after the end of the Roman rule in Britain, so after the 5th century, basically, so AD uh, 410, uh, some people, you know, some of the Romans remained, but a lot of people, like, moved away. Um, and I think uh, it it started to fall into a uh, disrespect. Um, and there's been a lot of, like, uh, other buildings around the Middle Ages, but most of it will fell into disrepair. Um, so yeah, so like I said, a lot of the buildings that you see now, you can actually go to the top level as well, were uh, built uh, later on in the 19th century. Um, and you can actually, if you wanted to go swimming in the baths, uh, you can either go to the Therme Baths Bar, which is kind of across from the Roman Baths, um, they offer like outdoor hot springs pools that you can go and swim in should you choose to um, do so. Um, I'm sure there's others as well, but this is one that's uh, one of the closest to um, being here. And also there's the cross bar as well, cross bath rather, sorry, that you can also go and uh, make use of uh, with its uh, outdoor pools. Um, However, it's not permitted to swim in the bar room bath anymore due to the fact that the uh, uh, there's a deadly pathogen that was found uh, back in the 1970s. Uh, the pathogen is called uh, Negleria fowleri, uh, and those who come in contact with it could get uh, Negleriasis, uh, which is uh, quite a fatal condition, pretty much fatal. And symptoms include meningitis, like uh, symptoms like headache, fever, nausea, vomiting, stiff neck, confusion, hallucinations, and seizures. Uh, so definitely don't try and touch it or bathe in it. Um, however, you know when the pathogen was found, uh, tests have been done, and I think it is still fairly safe. But just don't uh, don't risk it. Um, so these buildings, uh, I mentioned they were actually built in the 19th century, I believe they're more 18th century now actually, looking at the architecture. Um, and they were actually designed by uh, John Wood the Elder and John Wood the Younger, father and son duo. Um, and visitors to Bath would actually drink the spring water from the pump room because they felt that the, um, what was inside this water would help with any um, any ailments that they had. I, I believe the water is quite um, high in sulphates, so maybe not the uh, uh, best uh, <laughs> best thing to uh, drink. So you can actually see quite a few of the remnants of the bath uh, as well from the ancient times. Mm -hmm. So definitely worth checking out as it's pretty unique uh, to the UK. Uh, this is the website for the Roman Baths. Um, you can book your tickets here. It is cheaper to book your tickets online. Um, as the prices do change throughout the year. Um, so just bear it in mind when you do go. Uh, it is cheaper to go during the week, week weekday sorry, than the weekend. Um, and you get quite a lot of additional discounts if you happen to be a resident of Bath. Uh, or full-time students at the two universities based in Bath, as well as a Discovery um, um, card holders as well. Um, the um, the uh, but Roman Bath Company also do oh, when it does, yeah, there you go. also do quite a few uh, different tours. One 
a tool that I remember looking into and thought it was cool is the uh, Sunrise tool. Uh, and this is currently happening between 3rd of February 2023 to 30th of June 2023. So uh, get moving if you want to visit it before end of June. Um, and you get to see the uh, Roman baths in the mornings before um, the actual opening of the Roman baths for the public. Um, so you'll have to pre-book your um, tickets and they do tours as well. Um, so definitely, definitely um, check it out. Now I mentioned that there is a restaurant that's right next to Roman Bars. So let me just show you here the pump room. They actually get uh, a chance to uh, drink the um, uh, drink the um, um, the water, but you can also get a lot of um, eating. Uh, you can also get a lot of food to eat and afternoon teas. Sure, uh, if you wish to um, invest in those, um, but I'm sure there's other things to eat as well. This is a street view of the courtyard or uh, that the abbey and the pump room are situated into. Um, so this is the entrance way into the bath uh, abbey and the pump room. So um, I don't just remember these buildings when you go in. Um, and there's quite a few different shops as well opposite them that you can go um, if you wanted to buy souvenirs or simply just want to go um, somewhere cheaper to have. Um, things to eat as well. So yeah, so that was the bathroom, uh, room and bath rather. Um, there's also Bath Abbey. Um, so Bath Abbey is actually the the actual name for it is the Abbey Church of Saint Peter and Saint Paul. Uh, it's a parish church and it belongs to the Church of England and it used to be a former Benedictine monastery in Bath. Uh, and it was actually founded in the 7th century, reorganised in the 10th and rebuilt in the 12th and 16th uh, centuries. And it's actually one of the largest examples of perpendicular Gothic architecture that happens to be in the West uh, West Country, uh, which is just like a, another area for the southwest of England. It's like so it's another name for the southwest of England. Um, the medieval abbey church used to actually also be a cathedral of a bishop. However, the Diocese of Bath and Wells now is actually based in Wells Cathedral, which is also in Somerset. So that's another cathedral to visit if you happen to be in Somerset. Uh, the Benedictine community was actually dissolved in 1539 during the dissolution of the monasteries. Uh, that was when King Henry VIII decided that he wanted to... Um, move uh, away from the Catholic Church, so he ransacked a lot of abbeys, including the one that used to exist before Bath Abbey, um, and wanted to like move the country more towards Protestantism. Um, and the Bath Abbey is actually an active um, place of worship, so you can go for services if you wanted to. This is the view of the abbey from the Roman Bath. Uh, like, like I said before, you can actually climb to the top and you can see the cathedral, uh, abbey rather, um, as well. Um, this is what it looks inside and this is a good view of the abbey from the outside. Uh, it's actually a grade one listed um, and it has a lot of like war memorials for the local pop population as well as monuments for several notable people. This is pretty much um, um, found in a lot of cathedrals and abbeys across the UK, the memorials for local peoples, uh, especially war memorials and notable members of society for that particular area in, in cathedrals. And also stained glass as well, that's, um, that's like a, a popular um, thing to see in a lot of, uh, in a lot of uh, churches. Um, it's definitely uh, worth a visit. I don't want to mention all of the uh, information about the Abbey because then I feel like it's gonna um, the video is gonna become too uh, too too long. Um, but another cool thing about the Abbey is actually it's built of Bath stone, which is what gives the exterior color like a yellow a yellow color, uh, and it's actually not a typical example. 
of the perpendicular form of the Gothic architecture. Um, but it's still, I think, kind of part of it. So Bath stone, there's the limestone, um, and it contains fragments of calcium carbonate um, in, in within that stone, and it's actually from the uh, originally obtained from the honeycomb down and Bampton Down Mines uh, under Combe Down in Somerset. Um, it, the honey colouring of you know the stone is not just found in the Abbey but like across Bath as well. Um, is what gave the uh, is what gave Bath the World Heritage City status because the whole city is actually a heritage status, not just a couple of places. Um, an important feature of the Bath stone is that it's a freestone because uh, it could be sawn or squared up in any direction, unlike uh, other rocks like slate. And you can see it pretty much used in the uh, Bath stone, it's pretty much used, in, used extensively uh, throughout southern Britain, sorry, southern England rather, for a lot of churches, houses, and public um, places as well. Such as railways. Um, and let me see if I can show you a good example of it. Um, so, yeah, so this would be an example of the stone. Um, and it's pretty much kind of rump rumping throughout, um, throughout Bath. So, pretty cool. So, this is just the abbey from this angle. So, you can actually still uh, find some quarries that still are existing there. Um, so to visit the Bath Abbey, um, and it's, um, I believe you do have to uh, pay for it. I definitely remember paying £2.50, I think, as a donation. Oh, they've increased it to £6.50 now. Um, so yeah, so definitely, um, definitely make sure that you uh, check uh, online or on the Abbey website. I'll leave the links obviously in my channel description um, before you leave so that you can um, like uh, plan your itinerary according to the um, um, according to what you want to see um, so yeah so I still enjoyed visiting it uh, it was very peaceful and quiet despite the tourist um, being there and you can um, you know um, take your time over it and um, yeah, join them for services as well. Should you choose to take part um, in the services, and they got um, information about that also on the website as well, including live streams, which is pretty cool. So do check it out. So the next on the list I wanted to show you is the um, the uh, Theatre Royal of Bath. If you're a budding um, there to go um, I definitely recommend visiting them. Uh, obviously their website as well to see what kind of events that they've planned on. Um, so definitely uh, worth looking into, um, especially during uh, the holidays. Um, you know, if you want to go with your children, uh, definitely something to do as well. Um, this is not the only theatre in uh, in Bath, but it's one of the, I think, the popular ones. Um, so definitely uh, worth looking into if you are interested um, in more of the theatre um, aspects of Bath. So another thing I would like to draw attention to is the uh, Jane Austen Centre. Now the Jane Austen, uh, Jane Austen was a popular. Um, British author in the UK, uh, or in England rather, and she actually uh, spent a lot of time in Bath uh, and um, made note of like the landed gendry and nobility as well that would actually come um, come to visit um, Bath. A lot of people came to visit Bath for the purpose of uh, drinking the water to help with the um, what ailments they had, uh, and this particular centre, the Jane Austen Centre, it houses um, garments and information from like Jane aspect, Jane Austen's uh, time. Uh, you can actually have like afternoon teas as well inside, uh, like a Georgian style afternoon tea. 
there's like a memorial to the family as well um, and you can visit it up and down and a lot of the rooms are laid out as they have they were laid out during John, uh, Jane Austen's era um, again uh, do look online uh, about booking stuff especially the Regency Tea Room because uh, I have a feeling that that will be a very popular attraction to um, see um, so definitely worth, worth looking into if you like your afternoon teas as well and if, especially if you're a very big big fan of uh, Jane Austen it's a, it's a bit of a small building actually so it'll be hard to miss but you won't uh, actually miss the people in the Regency outfit who are stood outside um, so even though the building itself is kind of small like uh, you see here it's a, like a Terence to style house um, you won't actually miss the people dressed in Regency outfits, um, so definitely worth, uh, worth going, uh, to see if you're a big fan of Jane Austen. Um, so yeah, so definitely look into booking into Jane Austen's house as well if you're interested, um, in that. Um, but there's obviously other places to eat as well around that area if you prefer to have some, a different experience. So, one thing that I want to also show you, um, if you want to do more, uh, experience more of a, uh, uh, if you want to save money and just like walk around instead, is the uh, Royal Crescent. Uh, now, the Royal Crescent is a row, uh, sorry, a row of 30, um, 30 houses, uh, so 30 terraced houses that have been laid out in a sweeping crescent. In Bath, uh, and they were actually designed by um, John uh, Wood the Younger. So John Wood and the Younger and Elder were father-son duo architects who designed quite a lot of the buildings in in um, Bath. This is one of the things that uh, the Younger one um, designed, uh, and it was actually built between 1767 and 1774. And it's one of the best uh, examples of Georgian architecture to be found in the UK. And they are grade one listed. Um, so there obviously have been changes that have been made over the years. So you can see it here, you know, uh, with the um, uh, race scaffolding. Um, but, you know, uh, the houses are still pretty much remaining as it was first built back in the 1700s. And um, they all have, um, so there are, I think, around uh, 500 foot long, so 150 meter crescent, and it has 114 ionic columns. So these are the columns you see on here, uh, the, the Greek style columns. Uh, and on they're on the first floor and um, with an entablature in a Palladian style. Above the Palladian is a type of uh, European architecture that actually uh, came from uh, Venice uh, and is named after the architect Andrea Palladio, uh, and he came to the Britain, it came to the UK uh, between the 17th and 18th century, and a lot of it's uh, based on a lot of classical architecture from ancient Greek and Roman traditions, and the styles known as Palladium. Um, so a lot of notable people have actually lived you know, or stayed in the Royal Crescent over the years um, and some have commemorated plaques that are um, on them. Um, I don't think I can actually get a good view of it from here but when you do go see you'll see uh, some of the commemorated plaques. I think this is one right here um, uh, of like popular people that have lived there. And I believe number one, number one Royal Crescent uh, is actually a uh, museum and um, it's the number one Royal Crescent Museum and it's, um, you can actually go visit it as well if you wanted to, uh, this is the website when it does load. Uh, it was actually purchased in 1967. Um, by a major um, and he ended up donating the house to uh, the Bath Preservation Trust. Um, so at one point it was actually owned um, 
um, by others like wealthy owners. So the the trust now actually um, illustrate how the wealthy people would have lived um, during um, during the, like the late eighteenth century. Um, so you can definitely go and see quite a lot of rooms um, that are laid out and so. Now, here's an aerial view of what the Crescent looked like. Um, so just a bit about the um, Crescent again. So around, um, let's see if I can get from a garden view. It might be actually a much better view of the Crescent. Ooh, that's someone's. Uh, oh, here you go. Um, so of the Crescent, 30 townhouses, 10 are still actually functioning as full-size townhouses. 18 have been split into various flats um, or sizes. Uh, one is the museum, so that's number one, the Royal Crescent. And a large central house at 16 is the uh, Royal Crescent House and Spa, which is this bit here, so it's pretty much in the middle. Um, which you can book in to go if you choose to spend a few days in um, in uh, there. Um, ignore the prices in Zlotys. Uh, I'm currently based in Poland for medical school, so a lot of the uh, prices come up in uh, the local currency for me. Uh, but obviously, check out how much they are uh, on online before you book. So yeah, that's a bit about the Royal Crescent. Uh, I would also like to show you uh, the bath assembly rooms. Um, I can actually find... Um, ah, okay. So this is actually a national property, uh, national trust property. Uh, and they were also designed by John Wood the Younger in 1769. And there's a set of assembly rooms um, and now are open to the public as visitor attractions. The rooms are actually in various um, shapes and size. Um, so the uh, you know these uh, assembly rooms were built to host um, like as a as like a venue for balls, concerts, and gambling. Uh, but I think some of them were also uh, some of the area around that was also set uh, for building. Uh, for sorry for housing. Um, and the assembly rooms were actually opened in the Grand Ball in seventeen Grand Ball in seventeen seventy one, uh, and became pretty much a hub for fashionable society. And you had popular people like Jane Austen who frequented it, as well as Charles Dickens. So you can see where Jane Austen got her inspirations for Pride and Prejudice and for uh, her other books as well, simply by observing the fashionable crowd at Bath. Um, I think some of the actual settings for her books were um, influenced by uh, restaurants as well in um, in Bath, so pretty cool. Um, so the building again is made out of Bath. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get a street view. Bath stone, and it's kind of in a U shape, I believe. Um, um, and um, they actually have a four main function rooms. So it's arranged inside in a U shape. Um, yeah. So the hundred foot long, thirty meter uh, ballroom is the largest uh, Georgian interior in Bath. Uh, there's a tea room, which um, is this section here, um, and there's a, a card room and the octagon, which I believe is. Or possibly this building because it looks, or maybe this room because it looks kind of like an octagon. Um, over time, um, and chandeliers that you find here, sorry, uh, the white fries crystal chandeliers. So, back in the 20th century, they were actually used as a cinema, and in 1931, were taken over by the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings and restored. However, they were bombed. Uh, and burnt out during the Second World War, and restoration was done again before reopening in 1963. And they are now da uh, owned by um, the National Trust. Uh, and at one point, we're also housing the um, home for the Fashion Museum. I'm not sure if it's still there now. 
Um, you kind of should go visit the um public uh, assembly rooms, but they are currently closed to public. Um, I don't know when they will open, but you can actually um discover the uh, Bath uh, National Trust webpage for Bath. Um, here is the website for it. I will again post the um the link, and it shows you of all the National Trust properties around Bath and Bristol. Should you wish to um, visit them uh, as well uh, during your time at um, in Bath, so one other property that I would like to draw your attention to is the National Trust Prior Park Landscape Garden. Um, it's kind of outside of Bath, uh, but it is a very nice looking uh, building to attend uh, to go to for long walks. Uh, this is the website for it. Um, it tells you more about the opening times um, and um, as well as the prices that you need to go uh, to pay if you're not a um, National Trust pass uh, National Trust member. Um, so something to do, I suppose, if you uh, like your parks. Um, yeah. Um, so that's all I actually have to say about Bath, it's not pretty big. Oh, one last museum, uh, the Holborn Museum. I believe it is the, it is an art museum and um, you can attend to, um, you can go to visit a lot of art, a uh, lot of art and stuff um, in there. Uh, here is the website um, for the museum when it does load. Um, and it's um it's quite a nice museum um and it shows uh it's like the first public art gallery in Bath and it's home to a few uh, quite a lot of like fine and decorative arts built around the collection of Sir William Holborn hence why it's called Holborn or Hol Holborn I'm not sure how you pronounce it um Hol Holborn I think. But there's also quite, quite a lot of collection from, uh, you know, Gainsborough, Gardy, Stubbs and Ramsey, as well as Zoffanim. And there's also a lot of, uh, you know, temporary collections, musical, um, musical exhibitions uh, that you can visit. Um, they, I think they tend to be uh, ticketed, so do uh, to check out how much you'll have to pay for uh and pre-book as well before you before you go um because pre-booking now is uh, pretty much um essential um i do not know how much of ticket information okay um so yeah so these are the ticketing admin uh ticketing charges for uh the museum um it's a different uh prices depending on uh, what you want to go for um, and this actually along with the uh, Roman Bath is actually uh, uh, free for University of Bath and Bath Spa as well so definitely worth going uh, if you're a student at Bath or a local resident something to do if you wanted to do, um, get out of uh, you know studying all the time so the University of Bath is actually the main um, main university in in Bath, like the big big one. Um, I've not actually been um, to the university, but I've heard um, that it's pretty popular. Um, since I'm a medical student in uh, medical student, uh, I can say that Bath is one of the popular um, roles for um, sorry, popular universities for medicine. Um, it is, I think, one of the harder universities to get into as well, um, but it's, um, it, is, it still produces um, high quality graduates, as does all of the medical students, to be honest, um, I would say. Um, it also actually has natural sciences as a degree, that's the degree I did uh, before I did medicine, um, so definitely... Um, worth going into if you're interested in studying uh, at the University of Bath as well. There's also a Bath Spa University, um, which I think it's on, here, on this side uh, of the city. Um, 
this uh, I believe they don't do medicine, um, but it's uh, also uh, they do other courses. So um, I don't really know much about the university, but obviously the websites are there to help you make a choice. Uh, seems like a really pretty campus actually. That's uh, they both are very pretty campuses. So um, definitely similar vibes to what I had at Kiel University. Maybe I would say Bath is a lot prettier, uh, but I kill. Uh, I do feel I come and kill uh, a bit with these, but um, yeah, there's quite a lot of things to do for us uh, at both the Bath, Bath Bar and Bath University um, in the city centre. So you'll definitely not be bored, I would say, um, in uh, in um, in Bath. So yeah, so those are the few things I wanted to mention uh, to you about Bath. I will attach um, places to stay as well in Bath. Uh, but one thing I would like to recommend is the youth hostel organisation. They actually have quite a few hostels and camping spaces around the UK uh, in England and Wales. So for example, if you wanted to go um, during the Easter break, for example, which happens to be from the 7th to 8th, um, you can um, you can like um, find uh, places to stay uh, for uh, any number of people. So, for example, Bath I believe should have a hostel in um, a YHA hostel, uh, and you can go for different rooms based on what your budgets are um, and how many people are staying. So this is just for one adult. Um, um, this is obviously because it's quite soon, uh, April uh, next month. This is the price for it, but if you uh, book in advance, it is pretty cheaper. And you can have shared bedrooms or private rooms depending on your um, preference and how many people you're going. And they also have uh, restaurants, so, so definitely one um, place to recommend. Uh, let me actually see where it is um, in um, in Bath. Um, I think it should be quite close to the centre. Um, yeah. So, oh, quite close to the university as well. So not far, not far from the uh, from the city. Um, ample car park uh, around the university area as well. Um, should you, you know, if you're travelling by car. Um, the local train station to Bath is the Bath Bar. And they, I think, offer major routes to quite a lot of the big cities in in England. So, definitely um, a conveniently located city. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm uh, definitely all I have to say for my video about Bath. Um, do come visit if you can. It's a very quaint city. Uh, I was only there for a day, so I couldn't explore everything I wanted to have. Uh, wanted to do. Uh, I didn't get a chance to go to the university either uh, for open days. That's, that's something uh, as Bath was a bit too far from I me, mean, you know, in terms of travel time, uh, I disregarded it. Um, but for those who are uh, looking into attending either of the universities, uh, I definitely recommend the city as well. Um, it's very quaint. Uh, there's things to do um, if you're a bit of a uh, history nerd like I am, and you you like. Um, museum um, hopping, uh, definitely quite a lot of things to do uh, as well. Um, I would def definitely recommend having a car if you're a student coming to study at Bath because it seems like there's quite a lot of other places you can visit around Bath, so like Bristol and also like south of, um, south of further south of England, so uh, maybe that's a good idea, a car. Anyway, thank you for listening to my um, talk. Uh, it's probably one of the shortest uh, videos I've made, uh, but I hope you found um, Bath to be an interesting city and I hope you guys get a chance to visit as well in the future. Anyway, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next week for another episode.